sunlight, and shade. The budget has once again underscored the center's determination to promote solar power, to curb carbon emissions, and promote energy security. The center has topped its five-year production-linked incentive scheme for making solar modules by a generous 19,500 Indian rupees crore in view of the investment response received since November 2020. It has received proposals to set up a whopping 58 gigawatts of module capacity, for which the initial sum of 4,500 Indian rupees crore was insufficient. Clearly, module capacity needs to be ramped up to meet decadal goals. India has targeted an installation of 280 gigawatts of solar capacity by 2029 to 30, up from the existing level of 49.35 gigawatts, whereas it has limited operational annual capacities of around 2.5 gigawatts for solar PV cells and 9 to 10 gigawatts of solar modules. However, the solar sector in India is seeing rapid change on both demand and supply fronts. As regards the former, falling unit costs of solar have led to utilities being open to buying solar power more so with sophisticated power trading systems in place. Commercial, residential and agriculture demand is rising. With respect to supply, over two-thirds percent of the solar cells are imported from China, which, though a marked improvement over the last four or five years, remains an area of concern. India has evolved in assembling modules, but it is in processing and producing silicon wafers that capacity is wanting. To create another 230 gigawatts of capacity, over eight years, would amount to an annual addition of nearly 30 gigawatts. At present, indigenous inputs account for about 3 to 4 gigawatts of capacity creation per annum out of an annual solar capacity addition of roughly 10 gigawatts. But with investor interest, this is slated to change. If renewables are to account for about 40% energy used, against 12% now, it makes sense to reduce dependency on silicon wafer import. But there's a trade-off. India produces solar cells at about 25 to 30 cents, which at present equals China's cost of production. But China's costs have risen because of temporary shocks, its costs had fallen to 18 cents earlier. The duty of 25% on cells and 40% on modules might still render them competitive if China's costs fall to earlier levels. While integrated capacities could narrow the differential, it is also worth considering whether an additional cost is worthwhile for strategic reasons. The PLI encourages scale and is based on cells or modules sold. The center's push to solar must be complemented by a similar impetus to green hydrogen and frontier areas, such as non-lithium-based batteries, where no country holds an advantage as yet. China remains the leader in solar, but India's chance lies in the evolution of a world order that seeks to develop alternative supply chains in crucial areas.